I am Robert Kortz, man of leisure and local art enthusiast, and we are visiting with an old friend, uh, George Le Chevalier. Thank you for joining us, Georges. Thanks. When you say an old friend, you mean a young friend who's known you for many years. We met uh, at the age of one. Um, no, uh, an old friend in as much as we were together last, just March 14th, uh, you yeah. and I down at the United Arts Council. Yeah, which seems like a like it seems like a million years. I, I think I even look. took your hand back then. <laughs> you might have hugged me. I might have hugged you. Yeah, kind of a hugger. Um, I'm but, French. So I probably kissed you too. Um, uh, I'll take it. I don't get kissed enough. Um, well, we really enjoyed your visit uh, then, and you were showing us how you deconstructed some of Raleigh's uh, greatest chef's favorite dishes. Um, but we would like to check in with you now and see how the corona, the COVID-19 quarantine is affecting your art. Well, it's affected a lot of things apart from my art. My art is a reflection of what's going on. Right. Um, right now, it's kind of strange because a lot of my work deals with chefs and their favorite dishes and it's really heartbreaking in because a lot of the all of the chefs that i made paintings from or of they're going through really hard times so it's almost or it is family for me and this family with this uh, virus they have lost their restaurants and they're really struggling so more than anything, and I want to get this out of the way, uh, please support your local businesses. Please support your local restaurants. They're going through a lot. They have, um, I know Ashley Christensen and a lot, Angela Salamanca are working with uh, local officials to, to do something. So any chance you can support the local businesses, support the local restaurants, they need your help not only to stay alive, but when this thing is over, to make a comeback. There's hundreds, thousands of people affected by this. And more than anything, this is extremely, extremely important. I've been a starving artist for years. <laughs> I can't handle it. I still have a job. But a lot of the food industry are hurting and we need to help. But sorry to get out of topic. I just... I think no, I that's... Spot on topic. Thank you very much. And I saw your video weeks ago uh, talking about some of the things that we, you and I can do to support local restaurants. You want to drill off an idea or three? Yeah. Well, things have changed so much um, just because a lot of the businesses, they, they were taking, uh, they were doing takeout or pickup. Um, I know Cortez Raleigh with, um, with the chef that works there, uh, He's doing a lot of um, curved pickup. Uh, and, and again, a lot of restaurants are doing it. Sadly, a lot of the other restaurants have closed. Mm -hmm. So what we need to be doing, we need to be doing research. If you see in social media, uh, things that you can contribute, even if it's a dollar or two, that, that's going to help. So, and, and again, um, we should be talking about art, but I feel a little guilty because for years I have, uh, worked with chefs and they're all hurting and, and again it's it's a little strange because uh, my paintings deal with joy and food and there's should be a lot of that a lot of people should be cooking even though to find food it's a little hard nowadays uh, we have a big house and it's crazy how things are not um, are not available but, but and by the way talking about art mm -hmm. Uh, I kind of stopped painting. As a matter of fact, I kind of shut down a little bit in the last two or three weeks because I have a, I have the hamster running a lot. And I have a exhibit in October uh, at the Cary Art Center. And I was going to do something where I was going to talk to the chefs and talk about their favorite dishes and all that. But as of right now, I'm starting a new series of work and it has to do with food, but it's going to be a little bit different. And right now, I'm in the studio kind of 
doing sketches and thinking a lot. So that's a work in process. Um, have they said, I mean, that's, you got some time. Is that still open and running, I guess? Uh, have you, any thoughts to when the quarantine's going to either sell uh, in or? You know what? Um, well, as for my exhibit, it's in October. Hopefully by right. then um, things would have gotten back to normal. Who knows? The, the beautiful thing about these tragic times, any tragic time, it's that people that that are well there's some people that psychologically they don't move forward they expect things to be the same right it's not going to be the same everything's right. going to change there's going to be a bigger online presence so i think now is a time to be open to change and and again kind of go with the flow it's not the first time there's been change mm -hmm. throughout history there's been change we just need to adapt uh, Starbucks would come into places and the little coffee houses that would not adapt were out of business. Mm -hmm. Blockbuster, when all the internet happened, they didn't adapt and they went out of business because of Redbox. Same right. thing, same thing with Borders and Barnes and Noble. <clears throat> Borders, which was a great bookstore, went out of business because again, when the internet came in, they didn't adapt. Barnes and Nobles adapted. So they started doing online things and, and they still survive. So nowadays it's really important to learn how to redefine oneself. Well, George, that's certainly been a common theme with uh, the, the professionals and artists that we've interviewed that uh, now is the time to be planning for when it's over so that when it's over comes, you're not going, well, I'm glad it's over. Now what? So, yeah, and, and I think, uh, again, I'm a teacher and it's been challenging for me because I have to turn everything, years and years and yeah. years and years of lectures, I have to turn and do everything online. Things are going to be different when we come back, even for schools. I'm not too sure if places like UNC and Chap UNC and, and NC State, I don't know if they're going to put classrooms with 200 people together at least right. for a while so things are going to change even in the food industry i know like for many awards the chef that had many restaurants were the only ones that were getting it because we we got a little i don't, I don't want to say gluttony but a lot of the chefs were opening many many restaurants there were some celebrity chefs that were opening 14 15 restaurants when we come back, I don't know if that's going to be the case. I right. think uh, the food industry is going to take a really hard look at themselves. And I think many chefs after this are going to be a lot more careful about how they open a restaurant and, and what they do. Um, well, uh, are you still selling art or can we still reach out and see you? Yeah. Work? Yeah. Um, right now I'm working on this. Um, my website is glcart.com, um, glcart.com. And yeah, I'm always creating, I'm always sketching. Um, right now, I'm doing my online classes. And also, I started a new, a new project called Art Punks Podcast. And so far, we're only in Instagram right now because we we have recorded a few episodes. So we're in the recording process but we just started promoting it in instagram and it's kind of an alternative podcast about art usually no offense a lot of the art podcasts are really boring they deal with business with happy little paintings and i want to bring something different i want to interview people that are upset i want to interview people that not necessarily they paint happy little paintings. No offense right. to Ross, I loved him. But I want to interview people that are the alternative. You know, right. probably going to be a lot of swearing. Uh, I might have a few beers while interviewing people. But oh, <laughs> I want to, to talk about art that challenges you, not pretty art. I want to talk about things that are changing 
the world, uh, if it's not offensive, it's probably not good because it's not right. challenging you. Well, the thing about art is it's reflective of the human emotion. Mm -hmm. And we have a full spectrum of emotion, not just happy. If you're yeah. always happy, something's wrong with your meds. You know, we just, we're not built to always be happy. That's not the way it is. Yeah, and and, and that's true. And I think, uh, you know, people are creative and creative is okay. And creative is something positive. Art has to challenge, art has to question. Uh, in music, in literature, in painting, in film. Uh, so I'm more interested in that. And that's like a minority of what creative people do. Most creative people, again, it's kind of therapy. They use art for something happy, which I get it. Right. But then I'm interested in, in, in again, in, in the people that are going to come in and talk how challenging life is and, and how they can be politically involved or culturally involved in change. Again, I think it's right. the really interesting times. Uh, I, apart from the sadness and, and all these things, I kind of welcome these times because mm -hmm. these are the times that makes us reflect. These are the times that kind of make you think what's important. And and again, uh, if you're an artist or or you know or business person or something, these are the times that you need to raise the bar and you need to learn how to change. So again, right. it's sad because people are getting hurt, but it's something exciting because now you need to reinvent yourself. And I think reinventing yourself is good for humanity. I think it's good. Right. For, I mean, if you look outside, there's all these happy animals. We had right. kids. We had kids in my front door, literally, like a few days ago. They were walking and they were hanging out in my front yard. That has never happened. We've been here in this house for 20 years. And Earth is happy. <laughs> Pollution right. is down. The animals are happy. So maybe we are the problem. Well, I've seen many a times in my life and others, it's in the heat of the forge that the metal becomes pure, becomes steel, right? So. Yeah how we deal with this adverse adversary or adversity and uh, what we turn it into. So um, yeah. it is a good time to prioritize and, and take a look and reinvent even tear down and build back up. Yeah. And, and again, I feel bad because a lot of people, a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are out of jobs. It's extremely stressful time. So I'm not diminishing anything. I think it's, no, it's, it's horrible. I think, um, People are dying. I think people are unemployed. People are stressed. I'm stressed and I still have a job. So, but at the same time, I think these tests are what makes us move forward. And, and when everything is good, when everything is good and people are making money and, and everybody's happy, um, we lose touch with reality. And, and again, um, this is a sad time, but again, we need it. It's needed. It's needed. Right. I think there's also a difference. Um, I may have a couple years on you, but having lived through 9-11 and the Great Recession, this one is very different in that it's we're in control of this. We are doing this purposefully to save lives. We're going to be able to say that though it was painful, there was a huge reward and that it wasn't catastrophic. So yeah. I think that is playing a uh favorable tune for us in this crisis yeah. and i think yeah. just it's a little more we're in control of it than it's in control of us but yeah and and my 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 dad he was about 12 when world war ii started and he was in france and my grandmother is jewish so they had to leave the house they have to move to the south i mean they had to flee Mm -hmm. And they went to Clichy, which is uh, Vichy, which is in the south of France. They have to literally, like in the movies, run away because they would be killed. You see, that's stressful. Mm -hmm. uh, and and again, I don't want to diminish because I know a lot of people are hurting, and, and there's a lot of sadness. But it's not like a war right. where literally we will be executed. And I know again, I'm 
a lot of people have died and I feel extremely sad and, and lucky for us, for me and my family, we haven't been affected. But these are challenging times. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah. Well, in a lighter note, it's challenging times because uh, I haven't shaved my head for many, many, many years. And, <laughs> and I think when this whole thing ends, there's going to be a lot of people with either really bad long hair or really bad short hair like mine. Yeah. <laughs> I've been clipping mine for 20 years all by myself. Just okay. So, so you were ahead I, of the I, curve. Well, like, I've been, yeah, like 20 years ago, I shaved, I used to shave my head. And, and I guess I'm going back to, to back to back then to, to buy, I bought clippers online and, the only ones that were left, it was, I bought the Clippers online, and the only ones that were left was to trim beards. Oh. And their battery, so you have to charge it, let the battery, and then you you trim your beard. But I had really long hair, or really oh, no. bad hair. So it took me literally like four days to get a, the full haircut, <laughs> because the thing would end, and I only had yeah. half. <laughs> yeah, so I would have to charge it overnight, and the next morning I would have, so... There was hair in the sink for about five days, and and again I had part hurt cuts, so that's that's another challenge of, of the virus. Um, I have noticed that I'm really good at doing dishes. I mean, I've perfected the art of just getting them in and out, lined up, dishwasher started, boom, yeah. seven minutes. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it, it's weird because uh, I think the interesting part is again the haircuts and. At one point, I used to wish that every day was a Saturday. And now every day is a Saturday. So it feels really weird because I don't even know what day of the week it is. I have, yes. I'm often checking. All right. What? Uh, oh, it's Monday. What does Monday entail? Not much more. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I'd like to ask a, a favor of you. Um, uh, YBY, your backyard believes that artists are a huge part of what makes uh, Raleigh unique and special, and that like a small business owner or even a nonprofit, artists start what they do with the passion, but then they have to struggle to monetize it, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you want to be able to sustain your life and your art. So if you know of any of your friends that would like to spend some time talking to us about what they're doing, please have them reach out or give us their name and number. We would like to uh, routinely have as many of Raleigh's artists on and, and keeping in touch and help them promote them because without them, Raleigh's a boring, almost, it's a tertiary city with very little life if it weren't for the artists that bring such joy and emotion to our city streets. Yeah, and, and I guess because we're gonna have millions of people watching this podcast or this video interview, uh, millions of people are gonna be watching this. So, if any of my friends that, who are artists or or chefs uh, or creative people, if you're interested, uh, please send me a little message. And, and again, my memory is extremely bad. Uh, so, so again, uh, this 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 is the hottest interview in town. So, well, we love the small businesses. I got to Raleigh when I was 18 to uh, attend the university. Haven't left the three mile radius of the bell tower. And what Raleigh, what is Raleigh to me are the small business, the artists that make it unique and special. Because again, otherwise we all have the same big chain. So happy, would love to, to chat with any of y'all, but uh, Georges, thank you for spending some time with us today. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you. And, and thank you for what you do. Uh, again, like, uh, I've been seeing, I've been watching these daily interviews and, and again, thank you for what you do. You guys, uh, are great. Um, so no, thank you for having me. Happy to do it. And for those of you who don't know, Jonathan came in with preferred digital solutions is on the back end. Um, we don't let them get on the front end. It's a public service, but he is doing some great work. And we'd like to remind you, Raleigh, that Georges, uh, his art, local art, all that and more is right here in your backyard. Come support the power of local. Thank you, Rob.